Good evening, ghoulies and ghosties and long-leggedy beasties. This is Alex, coming at you from the underworld, and welcome back to another episode of... Before I get started, I would like to add a footnote to the video I did last weekend, which was the book review for The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. Pretty much in a nutshell, I understand that a lot of people are going through a lot of different emotions this year because of coronavirus and just life in general. And the reason why I'm bringing this up in regards to that book is because the day after I did my review and I uploaded it, I went into the kitchen and just out of nowhere I had a really nasty ugly cry. Which, truth be it, there were some other forces at work here. And after I got that cry out of my system, I just really sat there and thought about the Halloween tree a little bit and about how at the ending of the book, it's really something that poses us with a fantastic question. And it was just something that I had sat back and pondered because I was like, if I was in their shoes, I would have done the same thing if it was possible, but that's not possible. So that's just kind of a bitter pill to swallow. And I want to bring this up now because if you're going through a lot this year, the Halloween tree might be the cherry on the cake that makes you ugly cry. And I just wanted to put that out there and just give you a fair warning before you read it. So just be sure to have some tissues nearby. But with that said, let's go in and get down to having some fun. As I mentioned in a few videos ago that for the month of October, Carrie is going to be doing my makeup in every video, and the best look is going to be what I go as for Halloween. So, Carrie! Yes? So, this last week, I decided to read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. And I absolutely love The Headless Horseman. So I'm going to challenge you, and don't be a smartass about this. I would like to be The Headless Horseman. Okay. All right, well, I think I can do that. All right. Well, what do I need to do? Uh, just lean forward and stick your neck out. Uh, all right, well, I guess I need to be in the light so you can see my face a little bit better. And do I need to, like... No, Do that's my... perfect. Just right there. All right. Come on. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Well, due to that little mishap, mm, there's not going to be a makeup effect this weekend. So for that reason, I'm just going to go in and review the story The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. And truth be it, I'm really happy to finally do this because I wanted to read and review the story last year, but I just ran out of time. And even though I've seen the movies and the cartoon like a million times by now, I've never actually read the story. So it was really nice to go back to that source material. And after reading it, I was really surprised to see how the Disney adaptation was actually a pretty good adaptation of this story. Now, don't get me wrong, there are still differences between story and cartoon, such as in the cartoon, the cast is really portrayed as a caricature type of cast, whereas in the story, they're more so serious characters. But the cartoon did actually get their physical features accurate, so that was cool, and it did a good job with staying with the storyline and plot and all of that good stuff. But I was really happy to learn that the cartoon had some accurate geography to it. Like, if you read the story, then saw the cartoon, you're like, ah, I know the story behind that old church and creepy-ass cemetery. Or, oh yeah, there's that tree, the one that Ichabod has to pass by. I know the legend behind that. So, that was pretty cool. And going into this video, I was really considering not doing a synopsis or a spoiler section because I assumed that everybody knew about the Headless Horseman or the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. But prior to this video, I encountered a friend who really had no clue what I was talking about in regards to that story. So for that reason, I'm going to treat this video like how I have everything else. And without me rambling anymore, let's go on and get down to see what's going to make our heads roll this Halloween.
The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is a 24-page short story written by Washington Irving, and it opens up introducing to us a document by the late Diedrich Knickerbocker, which this explains about how Ichabod Crane came to Sleepy Hollow so he could become their new schoolmaster. Well, after Ichabod gets settled in, he becomes infatuated by the young and lovely Katrina Von Tassel. However, upon him setting his sights on her, he discovers that a local roughneck by the name of Brom Bones is also infatuated by her. So, as a feud begins between Ichabod and Brom because they have a shared love interest, a local haunt by the name of the Headless Horseman rises up from his grave on Halloween night, and shortly thereafter, Ichabod discovers that maybe, just maybe, Brom is not the worst of his enemies. Considered one of America's first ghost stories, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow was published in 1820. It first appeared in Washington Irving's collection of short stories and essays known as The Sketchbook of Jeffrey Crayon Gentleman. And while this classic is an early example of American folklore, History.com's article by Leslie Kennedy states, Tales of the Headless Horsemen have existed since the Middle Ages. Also, the same source noted that some people believe The Legend of Sleepy Hollow was possibly inspired by Sir Walter Scott's poem, The Chase. Others believe Irving was inspired by an actual soldier who had been decapitated by a cannonball in the late 1700s from the Terrytown area. And landmark-wise, places like the Old Dutch Church and Major Andre's tree that are name-dropped in this classic tale actually do exist. Fun Facts Here's some information about how The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is perhaps one of the most influential ghost stories of all time. Since 1922, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow has produced more than a dozen movies, TV show adaptations, and cinematic inspirations. Among those inspirations was an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark, Scooby-Doo, and even Little House on the Prairie. Adaptations include everything from Disney's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow to Shelley Duvall's Tall Tales to Tim Burton's 1999 reimagining Sleepy Hollow and the TV show Sleepy Hollow. Also, this book has had a geographical and cultural impact, such as in 1996, North Terrytown, New York was renamed Sleepy Hollow, and near that same time, its high school football team became named The Horsemen. In 2006, a sculpture of the Headless Horseman chasing Ichabod was placed along Route 9 in Sleepy Hollow, Terrytown, New York. Now that we have that out of the way, it's time that I discuss a few spoilers about this story. And if you've never read this before, these are some things that could ruin the experience for you. So if you wish to skip this segment, just scroll down to the comments section and you'll see that I have a pinned comment at the top. If you were to click in the timestamp that's in that comment, it will redirect you from the spoilers to the thoughts section. Now, you only have 17 seconds to do this. So, ready, set, go! Since everyone has had the opportunity to click away, I want to talk about a few of my favorite moments. And truth be it, this is a short story that's only 24 pages long, so quite a few areas where it could have been expanded out, it really was cut short. And truth be it, I don't see that as a problem. If anything, I see those short moments as being inspiration to create something more. Like, for example, I really did enjoy the ghost stories that were being told on Halloween, especially the story about Major Andrew's tree and also the lady who froze to death. So on a winter's night, you can hear her scream. And these are really just summed up in nothing more than a sentence or two, so for anyone who's looking for inspiration, they could totally build from that and create a whole other story on its own. But overall, I would really have to say my favorite moment is the chase between the Headless Horseman and Ichabod Crane at the end of this story. And the reason why I feel like it's so effective is because the author really does a great job of building dread in this particular scene. Like his pacing, description, and action, it all just comes together for the perfect nightmare. 
And I really like how with the story that Brom Bones had told, it just really kind of sticks with the reader and you get into the mindset that Ichabod Crane is in. And as you're going through that shadowed grove, you start to remember all of the scary stories that you had heard and it gets under your skin. And as he's just slowly going through there, hoping to make it home, he sees this towering figure. And this is when, uh, it's just, oh, so creepy. But this is when Irving uses the opportunity to really paint the headless horseman. Like he gives a good description of the ghost that's riding this black steed. And even though we know that the headless horseman has a jack-o'-lantern that's sitting on his saddle, it's still a pretty ghastly image because he first describes this as being a head that is set on the saddle. And then later on it's described as it actually being a jack-o'-lantern. But still... That's pretty creepy. And everything about this moment, it's just so intense and it builds on the dread. And I can actually relate to this because like back when I used to jog at night, even though I was not afraid of the dark at this time, it still kind of got under my skin in certain areas where I would jog. Like I would wonder, okay, well, who's watching me from the shadows? Maybe I need to pick up my pace a little bit. So that was totally relatable. And it was something that I really just absolutely loved reading versus seeing on TV because it built quite a bit more tension in a book format versus a movie format. I want to use this opportunity to talk about how I don't believe the Headless Horseman existed and it was Brom Bones this whole time. Which, let me paint you a picture here. Pretty much, for lack of a better word, you got these two fuckboys. One of which is Ichabod Crane, the other one is Brom Bones, and they're both after the same piece of tail. Which, girl, let me tell you, this piece of tail is rich, so they got something to fight for. Well, after they go through this whole little feuding ordeal, they end up under the same roof on Halloween night because Katrina is throwing this big Halloween bash, and after everyone decides to do the cha-cha slide or some shit, they sit down and tell ghost stories. Well, this is where Brom Bones uses the opportunity to psych out Ichabod Crane, and it works. Because Brom tells this detailed story about the Headless Horseman, and he also adds about where the Horseman likes to haunt the most, which, lo and behold, is is the same way Ichabod is going to use to go home. So the seeds of fear are already planted, and at this point, all Brom really has to do is just go to the grove, get into a costume, and wait for Ichabod to come by to scare him away. Which, of course, Ichabod does get scared away, and what happens next is Brom ends up marrying Katrina. Well, if you still think that the horseman existed and this wasn't Brom Bones, let me elaborate a little bit more on why I think this was Brom all along. At the beginning of the story, it's noted that Brom knows how to race horses, and the horseman does handle his horse pretty good. Also, at the end of the story, it's noted that Brom Bones has all of these extra details about what happened to Ichabod Crane, and these are some things that no one would know unless they were there. So, this lets me know that if he wasn't the horseman, he at least was a bystander, but I really do believe that Brom was in costume and he just scared away a chicken shit so he could marry a rich girl. Now, if I was Katrina, here's what I would do. If these were my two choices here, I would tell both of them assholes to go to hell that I don't need no man, they can just kiss my ass and go. And from there, I would just go to the garden, get me a nice old corn cob and some smut, and then I would just make do. I wouldn't need a man for my lonely nights in Sleepy Hollow. When I was doing my research for The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, I was really surprised to see that some people labeled this as a comedy. And I guess the reason why they did is because the ending presents one of two scenarios that could be possible. And I think that one of the greatest novelties of this story is the debates that the ending brings about. Now, with Wonder aside, I really have to compliment how the story was written because I love the word choice that the author used. I loved his pacing. And I think that everything just comes together for this beautiful folklore tale. 
And talking about beauty, I really love how Irving described the village of Sleepy Hollow because it seems like this quaint little village that you could just relax in, but there's also an underside to it that's very dark. And even at the beginning of the story, we have the idea that maybe the land is cursed because of some of the powwows and magic that went on there prior to people settling. So I really like that vibe, and it's something that kind of reminded me of Twin Peaks in a way because you have that whole quaint little area where you could sleep with the doors open, but then there's also this underbelly of evil. So that was cool. And as far as characters go, this is, of course, a short story, so you don't have too much time to develop your characters. But the development that is here is pretty solid. Like, I was able to see that Ichabod Crane is a homely guy who's also kind of a nomad, and he really uses his intellect to take him wherever he wants. However, on the flip side, we have Brom Bones, who, even though he's really hot, he doesn't really come across as someone who's book smart, but street smart. And for the most part, he ends up using his looks to get him ahead and also his street smarts. So to see the two of them clash, it was really interesting to watch the battle of the egos. And then I really enjoyed Katrina's character development because she seems modest, but at the same time independent. And yeah, she does kind of have that little mousiness about her and stuff, but there's the independent side that shows that she can actually do whatever she wants, especially with having multiple suitors. And I think this kind of comes across by her being as privileged as what she is, because I think that if she wasn't as privileged, she would probably be looked down on for having the same abilities of men. And I think that when maybe the story came out, some people might have looked at Katrina in a bad light. Personally, I didn't. But it would be interesting to see if people had slut-shamed Katrina for having those abilities, or if they felt sorry for Brom Bones and Ichabod Crane, or exactly who they felt sorry for. So that would be interesting to learn a little bit more about. But truth be it, I really didn't feel sorry for any of the characters here. It just kind of brought me into a scene where I was observing, like, a drama. And I really enjoyed how everyone kind of came together in these puzzle pieces where it shows that we're working with nothing but great characters. I, I guess in an easier term, we're working with just typical human beings. So that was really awesome. Now, at the end of the day, the story really did not scare me or creep me out until the end. Once I got to the end, if I was sitting outside reading this story at night, yeah, it totally would have scared the hell out of me. But since I was inside reading it by lamplight, I felt pretty safe. But I think I would like to enjoy the story outside at night with like maybe a flashlight or whatever and just be able to take in the whole value of the story like that. So yeah, it did actually creep me out. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow is a fun read, and I love how everything comes together to make the perfect scary story or the perfect mystery. Like, we have a good blend of action, drama, character development, creepy scenery, and it all just comes together and works. Plus, it's a very iconic folkloric tale, so there's nothing more I could ask for. Now, if you do decide to read this with your family, I want to give you a heads up. Due to the time in which this was written, there are some derogatory words that are used for people of color. So I would urge for you to read this first and then decide when to censor yourself when reading it to someone younger, because even though this is a product of its time, those words are still very hurtful and I don't think they're necessarily good for young ears to hear. So definitely become familiar with the story first. And with that said, I really did enjoy this. It feels like it's something that is suitable for Halloween, like how A Christmas Carol is suitable for Christmas. And I think that if you're a fan of horror, everyone should read this at least once. On to the questions. My first question is, what is a horror book you would recommend that is also folkloric? Load up the comments. My second question is, 
who is your favorite iconic horror villain? And the reason why I'm posing this one is because, I mean, the Headless Horseman is pretty iconic. But as far as myself, I would really have to pick Freddy Krueger because he was scary in part one and also New Nightmare. And everything in between, he had kind of lost his touch, but he remained kind of comedic. And also he had the ability to do whatever he wanted when he wanted as long as you were asleep. And because of him kind of having the power to just kind of manifest whatever was out there, you never really knew what he was going to do next. So I really like that surprise. But be sure to load up the comments on who you pick because I would just like to see the diversity in answers. And with that said, it's now time to move on to my new segment, which is to shout out the best meme of the week. And what I have been doing is on my social media platforms, I'll post one image for an upcoming video and the best caption ends up getting a shout out. Although there were quite a few different captions that stood out to me this week, the one that really made me laugh out loud was from Marina Mooring. And she said, when you're happy about your smart ass comment and your boyfriend is sick of it. <laughs> so thank you for saying that, Marina, and thank you for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed this weekend's meme because it really did make me laugh out loud. And if you would like to contribute to next weekend's meme, just go to the description section in this video and select one of the links that I provided for my Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And once you're there, you'll see that once a week I'll upload an image and all you have to do is leave a caption. And of course, the best caption receives a shout out. Also, I would like to say thank you to Lisa G and J.L. Mulvihill, which J.L. Mulvihill is a fantasy author for young adults. And if you would like to check out her books, they're available in print, ebook, and audio, so getting your hands on a copy is not hard to do. And if you're wondering why I'm giving a shout out to these wonderful people, it's because they've been able to contribute to my Patreon account. And if you would like to contribute as well, the link is available in the description section of this video, which for $5 a month, I'll give you a shout out. And if you have a certain profession you would like for me to tie to your name, I'll do that as well. And for $10 a month, I'll give you that shout out, but I'll also send you over one of my creepy photos once a month, which I do creepy photography on the side. And when you receive this photo, you can do whatever you want with it. So if you're able to contribute, that's awesome. If not, that's cool too. I just hope you return to this channel so we can have fun. And if you would like to join me on my TikTok, feel free to do so because I have a link to my TikTok account in the description section as well. And I really do just movie reviews on TikTok, which I just reserve the book reviews for YouTube because I like to go into a lot of description with book reviews versus movie reviews. So feel free to check me out on TikTok if you're into hearing about the horror movies I've watched. Also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, be sure to subscribe and click that notifications bell because I have more book reviews coming in the near future. And until we meet again, I hope you have a wonderful week and sweet nightmares.